charge team. I'm Ben Byers. Courtney Richards. I'm Kelly Hathaway. And we are students from the Electric Vehicles Design Lab class of 2015 in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at Utah State University. The course objectives this year in the semester's course was to learn how to use the laboratory equipment, including oscilloscopes, LCR meters, power supplies, and multimeters. Learn how to test the battery used in an electric vehicle and derive its parameters. Apply this gained knowledge on testing and modeling a lithium iron phosphate battery. To learn how to test an electric motor employed in an electric vehicle and derive its parameters. Apply gained knowledge on testing and modeling a brushless DC motor. Design a practical regulated bi-directional DC to DC converter and motor drive inverter to connect a battery and a motor. Apply computer simulation tools such as MATLAB Simulink and LT Spice to analyze switching converters and design analog controllers. Create your own PCB layout, solder electronic components, test and troubleshoot your own design. Now for a brief overview of our the first stage system. in our system here is our boost converter that brings in the 24 volts from the battery and boosts it up to 50 volts. And right here is the current control loop and the voltage control loop in order to maintain the 50 volts on our boost. After the boost stage, we have off the 50 volts, the input to the inverter. You see these sets of six sets of switches here, as well as the motor driver there, as well as some control logic circuitry controlled by a programmable logic device and a hysteresis comparator circuit. This combination of devices controls the motor to provide current to our electric hub motor in the front of the vehicle. It works. The control works by providing a uh, feedback from the current sensors, which are those small integrated circuits there. And that sends a current signal back to our hysteresis circuit, which is compared with the current reference. And from the hysteresis current circuit, we get switching. And depending on the set state of the hall sensors, which are input from the bike signals to the board to the hysteresis and the logic signals the logic controls which legs of the three phase inverter are switching at any given time to control the ref the current through the phases depending on the rotation of the tire at that time so in order to operate the bike uh, the first step is uh, you want to be able to control the inrush current as you plug in the battery. So in order to do that, we have a switch right here that when it is the switch is off, there's a resistor in series with the battery. And this it controls the current that goes through as it tries to charge up these capacitors. So when you plug in the battery, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to make sure that this switch is in the zero position. The resistor is in series. Mm -hmm. You're going to turn the battery on and you wait for about a second. It doesn't take very long at all. And then you can flip this switch. Then once you have flipped that switch, you, you have power to the board. Now, in order to turn on our system in, in easy, nice steps, we have this three position switch. So this three position switch right now is in position one. And if we take it to position two, it will turn on the boost converter. And then after it's been there for a few seconds, you can then take it to a third position, uh, which will take it from, now we, that we have our 50 volts from the boost converter, we can turn on the inverter with the third position and the three position switch. Now, in order to control our bike, uh, we have 
our throttle here on this side, which is an analog signal, and it's uh, controlled just with your hand. And then there's a brake signal over here. Now this is a digital s signal, it's on or off. And this uh, is acts as a brake. When you are going along, you can use the throttle to go to control the current reference going. And then as you brake, you have a soft brake with when you pull this brake right here. And then if you want a hard brake, you can push the button. Now the soft brake sends five amps, negative five amps current to slow down the bicycle. Whereas if you push the brake and the button, it'll send negative 10 amps. Now these signals, the throttle is sent to the Arduino, uh, the microcontroller in here. Now the Arduino Leonardo is the microcontroller that we used, the board that we used, and it controls the boost reference, so it keeps the boost reference at around 50 volts. And then it also has the current reference controlled from the throttle signal and the brake. The, uh, um, this microcontroller also controls our, uh, our over voltage and over current perfection these latches are controlled and it can stop the bike if it reaches those conditions. Okay, so here we're gonna prove that our regenerative braking works. So Kelly's gonna start initially by just running the bicycle in acceleration mode. As you can see, he's got the throttle almost maxed out. And then now he's gonna apply the brake, the soft brake right there. Watch the wheel slow down. And then it's perfectly stopped. Okay, here's our bike completely running with the battery. Independent of benchtop power supply. Yes, independent of benchtop power supplies. And, and here's braking. Regulating 50 volts grade. Backwards spinning. 